Hello. In this video, we are going to calculate the molar solubility of lead to iodide. In other words, we want to determine the concentration of a saturated solution in units of molarity. The first thing which we want to do is to write out the relevant equilibrium. We start with our lead to iodide solid, and then upon dissolution, upon dissolving it in water, to a small extent, it's going to break up into a lead to plus ion, which is aqueous, plus two iodide ions. So this example is different than our previous example, because in this case, we have a divalent cation and two monovalent anions. The next thing which we'd like to do is to write the expression for the equilibrium constant. So this is our Ksp. And as we recall, we put the products as the numerators. So first we have the concentration of lead 2 plus aqueous. We also recall that whereas we add together the products in the reaction, when we write the equilibrium constant expression, we multiply the relevant concentrations. So we have the concentration of iodide here. And now we have one very, very important feature that we have to make sure that we do. And that particular feature is to recall that whenever we have a coefficient, a stoichiometric coefficient that is not equal to one, when we write the equilibrium constant expression, we have to use that coefficient as an exponent. So we have to raise the concentration of iodide to the second power. And that's exactly this two that we began with. Again, if we compare the way we've written the equilibrium constant expression here to other reactions with which you might be familiar, you will notice that we do not have anything in the denominator. Typically, we would have the concentration of the reactants written on the bottom of a fraction. But we have to recall, here is sort of another important exception to the rules in how we write equilibrium constant expressions. Whenever we have a pure solid or a pure liquid, we omit those from the equilibrium constant expression. The other thing to keep in mind in this particular case is that we would look up the value of the equilibrium constant expression in a table. And we notice for this particular compound, that this expression has the value of 9.8 times 10 to the minus 9. So we see it's much smaller than 1, so only a small amount of the lead to iodide is actually going to dissolve. So now what we would like to do is to solve for the concentrations of the lead to ion and for the concentration of the iodide. We start off with a standard technique, and that is to let x equal the concentration of our lead to iron. So this is very uh, similar to how we would normally solve the problems. A difference from uh, more conventional cases that in this particular equilibrium, for every one lead 2 plus ion that is formed, we form two iodide ions. So it tells us that the concentration of iodide, once we dissolve, is going to be twice the concentration of lead 2 iodide. Because the only possible sources of these ions are from lead 2 iodide that has dissolved. So therefore, we can set 2x is the concentration of iodide.
So now becomes a very, very important and perhaps tricky step because we would like to substitute our expressions for the concentrations of the ions into the equilibrium constant expression. And this will look slightly different from how it looks in other cases. So let's just show KSP. So it's pretty straightforward for the concentration of lead 2 plus because we know that has the uh, symbol. We're going to use X for that. That's the variable we use. But now the concentration of iodide in our equilibrium constant expression is set to 2X. So here's two parts of what we write here. First, we have to give the value which is essentially inside the brackets, which is our 2X. And then we have to recall, this is extremely important, we have to recall that in the equilibrium constant expression, the concentration of iodide is raised to the second power. So we have to make sure that we square this expression here. Once we do that, we can manipulate our expression using algebra, and we realize that first we get x. 2x squared is 2x times 2x. So that gives us a value of 4x squared. Then using the property of exponents one more time, we notice that x times 4x squared gives us a value of 4x cubed. Whenever we have a poorly soluble salt where we have a divalent cation and two monovalent anions, which are of a plus two and two minuses, we will always end up with this intermediate step where the algebraic equation we're solving is going to be Ksp equals 4x cubed. Sp equals 4x cubed. Next, we combine our two expressions for the Ksp. On one hand, we know its numerical value is 9.8 times 10 to the minus 9. And we also know that by algebra, we've set it equal to this expression 4x cubed. Now, as we typically do, we want to solve for x. Our first step is simply to divide each side by 4. Once we have done that, we get that x cubed is equal to 2.45 times 10 to the minus 9 power. Now, it is a relatively straightforward technique to uh, solve for x. What we want to do is take the cube root of each side. So we're going to take the cube root of this. And again, we can use the uh, shorthand technique that we've used before um, on the right-hand side. We know that if we take the cube root of a product, it's equal to the product of the cube roots. So that means I can break this expression up into two parts. First, I have the cube root of 2.45, and that's multiplied by the cube root of 10 to the minus 9. Again, using the properties of exponents, we notice that the cube root of x cubed is simply x. On the right hand side, the cube root of 10 to the minus 9 gives us 10 to the minus 3 power. If you're not sure and you want to double check that you've done this properly, simply cube this. So multiply 10 to the minus 3 times 10 to the minus 3 times 10 to the minus 3, and you'll see that you actually do end up with 10 to the minus 9, which proves that the cube root of 10 to the minus 9 actually is 10 to the minus 3. Then we only need to take the cube root of 2.45 and use our calculator to do that, and we get a value of 1.6. Now notice, even though we kept three digits here, we are given the KSP expression with only two significant figures. Therefore, in our final value for X, we want to keep only two significant figures. 
So this tells us that the value x is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3. Now we recall what is x equal to. So that's always important is to write down and to recall exactly what the variable that you're solving for represents. So I'll just write it as a shorthand here. It's the concentration of the lead to iron. So we also notice, if you back up in the video, that we got one lead to iron for every one mole of or every molecule of lead to iodide that actually dissolved. So the concentration of lead to iron that we see here is the same as the concentration of the dissolved solution. So this tells us that the molar solubility of lead to iodide, when it's as concentrated as it's going to be, is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Another way to say exactly the same thing in different words is to say that if we make the most concentrated solution of lead to iodide that we can at 25 degrees centigrade, that solution will have a concentration of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.